All right, welcome back everyone to my devlog. And today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you what I've managed to get done since my last video in my voxel rendering engine. Now it's been a bit of a delay since my last video, but I'm excited to show you my latest updates and what I've managed to get done. Also, stay tuned for the end of the video where I'm gonna be showing a challenge that we did on the Discord server where we had to make a game. And we got two games submitted and I'll be showing you the games at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. All right, since my last devlog, I've been working on the rendering engine. Now, this has been a lot more complex than I'd actually imagined. And it's required me to rewrite most of my rendering code and pretty much the whole game engine itself, which has been a long ordeal, you can imagine. <laughs> So I've also been approaching multiple different data structures and algorithms to solve these problems whilst doing this, which again, takes quite a bit of time. I wanted to start by going back to the bare bones of what I'm trying to do. The first thing I'm trying to do is traverse a grid of voxels. And there's a pretty good algorithm to do that called a DDA algorithm. I'll link the paper in the description. It's very efficient to traverse a grid of voxels that are regular sized. However, I actually want to use a non-regular sized grid of voxels. This is because I wanna have sparse data. So you wanna have areas in the grid that are empty, which technically have larger voxels. However, this algorithm doesn't work with that. So I've been working on updating the algorithm and making a version of it that works over sparse grids. Now that did take me quite a bit of time. And that technique added quite a lot of complexity to that algorithm. So I'm not too happy with the actual final result and the algorithm that I'm using for that. Because that resulted in a more complex algorithm, I've also been exploring other techniques and data structures that I could use. So one of these data structures I've been exploring is using an SDF or a signed distance field. Now signed distance fields are very useful because what they are is they store the distance to the nearest field of voxel. And if you know the distance to the nearest field voxel, the ray can step that distance and guaranteed it's not gonna hit anything. This can speed up the performance of the ray caster because the ray can skip massive sections of the world efficiently. And also it simplifies the code compared to a grid hierarchy stepping system, which can be quite complex. Now there's actually a big problem with an SDF and that is that it works mostly on non-sparse data. So again, a regular grid. Now I want this to work on a sparse data structure. So it's non-regular grid. That's because that uses less memory. For example, the empty areas in the room can be filled with nothing. They don't have to be stored in memory. I've been looking at a mix between an SDF and an octree, where an octree has very sparse data structure, but it isn't as efficient to traverse. And the SDF is quite efficient to traverse, but again, isn't very sparse. So a mix between the two is kind of exactly what I'm looking for. So to start iterating on these algorithms, I use the website Shader Toy, which has been very helpful because it actually has a way for you in the web browser to write shaders and experiment with different algorithms and view other people's shaders that they've written. So I started with someone else's DDA algorithm and I'll link that shader in the description and I extended that to work on multiple grid levels so it could work over an octree for example. Now this added quite a few problems in complexity as I said previously so I'm not too happy with the result of that, but it's one of the things that I've tried. One of the errors I actually faced when trying to get this working was ray direction being calculated incorrectly, and that created like a kaleidoscope looking image, which I thought was very interesting, so I'll show you guys that. One of the other things I experimented with was using textures instead of buffers to store the voxel data. Now, the main reason I decided to start using textures is because my new rendering algorithm actually uses a 3D index and a texture can look up using a 3D index very efficiently compared to a buffer. Implementing this actually caused quite a few problems. That's because my renderer was choosing locations right in between two pixels and the graphics card was rounding up and down kind of randomly and that means it was producing noise because it couldn't decide whether it was a filled voxel or an empty voxel. I fixed this by actually adding a small ray direction to the position, 
that moved the position of the ray ever so slightly forward and into the voxel. However, after adding the texture system, I realized it would actually require a full rewrite of my caching and voxel streaming systems. So I decided to actually stick with using a buffer. Now, after using the textures, I realized that creating a better cache locality and having the data close to each other in memory would be very beneficial. So my idea here was to use Morton codes to encode the voxel positions in my array. Now, if you don't know what a Morton code is, is it's a way to encode 3D locations close to each other in a one dimensional array. There's one big problem with it. Looking up an X, Y, and Z position is quite complex because you have to do bit shifting and bit, bit interleaving to get the actual Morton code index. Now that's more instructions that I would need to run every iteration, which would just be a bit of a waste. So I wanted to have a system where I could increment the Morton code value. Now I found a library called Morton lib that actually had an example of a function that allows you to increment a Morton code using it, an X, Y, and Z value. And this was actually requiring simple masks and ors with bitwise operators. That was actually a very simple algorithm to implement and it would work quite efficiently. So this is something that I've now got working in my shader with my new algorithm and rendering two voxels. <laughs> So we're a long way away from rendering the full scene that I am hoping for. But again, this is a new system that I'm trying out. After going through all of this and, and working through all these different systems, I am getting closer to something that I would be happy with. But I do think, again, it's gonna require me to go back to the drawing board of what I've worked on at the moment and rewrite that. But I have actually explored lots of different ways and I'm a lot closer to the final version that I'd be happy with. So hopefully in the next video, next month, I can show you that result and what I've managed to get done. And hopefully that one won't be late this time. <laughs> so before I go, I also wanna show you what people managed to get done in the Discord server challenge. Now in this challenge, we asked people to create a game that could be finished in five minutes or less, just to keep it nice and simple for the, one of the first challenges. And we got two submissions, and one of them was from Thib's workshop, where he made a very cool game where you are a shape, and you get to dash around the scene, and you have to dash into enemies to destroy them. I thought that was a quite cool concept, and it works very well. So you can also check out his game in the description. And he also has a YouTube channel where he's making a voxel game, which you might find interesting too. So I'll link that in the description too. Also, there was one more submission, and that was from Mr. Shark Games. And he made a game where you're a shark, and you have to eat the fish. And if you hit the jellyfish, you lose lives. Eating, hitting the fish, though, eating the fish, you gain lives. So it was quite a fun little 2D game that can be played in five minutes or less. Thank you guys so much for those submissions. And I'll link, as I said, both of them in the description for anyone to check out. So give them some support. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be seeing you in the next one. And thanks for watching.